Easter morning, over 2,000 years later, we come with a sense of joy, we come with a sense of excitement, we come with a sense of celebration, because we know that in the events of everything that took place in the week leading up to Jesus' death, as we came and we gathered here on Friday, we're able to call the crucifixion, we're able to call Friday good, because we know that Sunday's coming. We know that we view the cross in light of the hope of the resurrection, with the sense of joy and excitement and ultimate celebration. But if we were to pause, if we were to go back to that very first Easter morning, the mood would have been very different. It would not have been a scene where you would have seen joy and excitement and celebration. But those that were closest to Jesus were overwhelmed. Some had locked themselves up in fear of what would happen next. Some were uncertain, and most certainly all of them carried this sense of doubt, of wondering just what truly happens next. And as we think of just some of the doubt that was surrounding that very first Easter day, much of it is pinned on one individually. Over the years, over the 2,000 years, Thomas is most certainly the disciple who's been kind of thrown under the bus historically as being the doubter. The one who had such little faith. We can kind of understand a little bit why. I mean, we, we just read those words where the other disciples, the other followers, had seen Jesus. And they came with a sense of excitement and this sense of joy. And I'm sure we've all been there before, where you have such good news, something so exciting that that you want to go and and you tell them. And it's like they're a wet blanket. They could totally care less. That's really what Thomas was to those other disciples. He says, unless I see it for myself, unless I see Jesus' hands, unless I see his side, I will not believe. Thomas drew his line in the sand. And so history remembers him as the one who doubted, the one who had such little faith. But if you back it up a little bit, if you begin to read all of the accounts around that first Easter morning, you realize that actually Thomas was exactly the same as every other follower of Jesus. We're told that when the women went to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body and they found him not there, there wasn't a sense of excitement of, oh yes, our Lord has risen. Who, who, who stole his body? Who would steal his body? Where, where is he? But then Jesus appeared to the women. And they too were so excited. And so they couldn't keep it within. So what did they do? They wanted to go and tell others. So they ran back to the men who had locked the door in fear and said, you don't need to be afraid. We have seen him. We have seen Jesus. And what was their response? You're all crazy. There's no way we would believe. And so as you begin to see the accounts of that very first morning, the question I ask is for this pivotal moment, not only in the movement of Christianity, in the movement of of Jesus bringing this good news into the world, this, this pivotal moment in the history of the world in which we live, why include all this doubt, all this uncertainty, I mean, maybe if there was some doubt, there could be some doubt from, you know, the outsiders. Those who weren't really close to Jesus. Those who didn't really believe in his message anyways. But those closest to him? Those closest friends and companions? The ones whose friendship could be measured not simply in days or weeks or months, but in years? Why couldn't they believe? Why why would there be such doubt in their mind. And as I find myself coming back to this question, I realize again, it's questions like these, it's, it's encounters like these that remind me why I appreciate the Bible so much. Because it bears the history, 
the humanity of God entering into this world, warts and all. You see, so often we, we think of the apostles, we think of the disciples as, as those heroes of faith, those, those individuals that really carried the message of Jesus, but here we truly see their humanity. And I appreciate the fact that this doubt was included because doubt is a reality to life. We get it wrong in the church when we try to pretend that if, if someone has faith, they need to be immune to doubt. That, that to ask questions, to be, to be uncertain, to, to not be 100% sure indicates a weak type of faith. And so perhaps in reading these accounts such as Thomas and such as the others, we need to view doubt in a different way. We need to view doubt with a different perspective. Because perspective can be so valuable to helping you interpret the current circumstances you face. There is a perfect example here this morning. If you would have woken up and saw what you saw this morning in, say, December, there would be celebration. There would be joy. Christmas is coming. But to wake up to the scene this morning, even though it's Easter morning, the first words out of your mouth probably shouldn't be, are you kidding me? (laughs) Perspective is everything. And so how do we view our doubts? How do we view our uncertainties? Perhaps you're you're someone who is exploring faith. Perhaps you are are someone who, who has questions about Jesus. You have questions about the validity of the resurrection. Did it really happen? Could it possibly happen? Or perhaps your questions extend into into other avenues of life, of wondering, can the Bible really be trusted? Did Jesus really die for my sins? How do you you balance the, the issue of suffering and pain and a good and loving God? I mean, there's questions. There's uncertainty. There's at times doubt as we enter into seeking who Jesus is. Or perhaps we've, we've made that decision to say, Jesus, I want you to be a part of my life. But then suddenly we may think, well then, if I believe in Jesus and if I follow Jesus, then, then should I have questions? Should I have doubts? Sh- should I ever ask the question of, is God, are you really with me? Do you truly understand my circumstances? And so how do we view doubt? What is our perspective upon it? Because I believe as you step back into that very first Easter morning, as you step back into the majority of the stories that are told in the Bible, you see that God has a very different perspective upon doubt. That that doubt is not only a reality, but perhaps it's a necessity to faith. That doubt is the opportunity that begins to pave the way to transformation. I'm sure we've all been there, where you've had a moment in your life that upon looking back upon it, you think, why did I doubt? Why did I not think that things would work out as they did? Perhaps that's why someone very brilliant said, you know, hindsight is 2020. But when you're in the moment, when you're in the situation, too often the situation can overwhelm your greater perspective on life. There's many events that I can pull up in my own mind of of moments that just seem so significant that I realize there must have been a lot of doubt in the moment. I, I think back to when I was a young child and I was learning how to ride a bicycle. I mean, today I'm fairly confident, fairly competent on a, on a two-wheel bicycle took the training wheels off a number of years ago. But I realize that there was a moment in my life when I would have doubted. And I say that because of the perspective that I have seen through my children and through other children as they are learning to ride a bike. 
I'm sure you've been there, whether as a parent, as a grandparent, as a friend, as an older sibling. You know, there's a moment in this child's life when they've been riding a bike and they've, they've upgraded from the tricycle to, to a bike with, with um, training wheels. Love it when I forget those. Training wheels, and you're riding along, and everything seems okay. But then there's a moment when you think, you can do this. You can step beyond training wheels. Because life is so much better without training wheels on your bike. And so as a parent or as a sibling, as a grandparent, you're running alongside and, and you've taken the training wheels off and, and you're holding a child by you know, the back of the shirt or, 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 or by the bottom of the seat and the entire time you're encouraging them, saying you can do this, you can do this, you, got, you can do this, you're not going to fall, I'm here, I will catch you because you know inevitably there's going to be a speed wobble and you know that bike is going to go down. And so you run and you make sure you're there. But the child has a different perspective. The child thinks, not only can I not do this, I'm going to fall, I'm going to crash. They think, my parent, my dad is not going to catch me. I'm not only doubting myself, I'm doubting him as well. And so what do you do as a parent? You see their child not only doubts their ability, but now they're doubting your presence with them. And so you just let them fall, right? That'll teach you. Don't doubt me ever again. No, you meet them where they're at. You're old enough. You're, you're big enough. You're mature enough to handle your child's doubt. The same is true with God. Sometimes we may mask our doubt, wondering, can he truly deal with it? But as we see in this encounter that Jesus has with Thomas, we see how God handles our doubt. Notice Jesus didn't show up. Because he appeared in the room. The disciples were there, and, and, and Thomas had, had written his line in the sand and said, unless I see, unless I touch, I will not believe. Jesus could have appeared and said to Thomas, what is wrong with you? How many times did I tell you, even before I died, that after I died on the third day, I would rise to life? Thomas, simple math. It's the third day. Why didn't you believe? And if that wasn't enough, I then appeared to your closest friends, the people you believe, the people you trust, the people you've hung out with. And they came before you and they said, we have seen Jesus. He has risen. And you said, I don't believe. No, Jesus meets Thomas right where he was at. He says, Thomas, see my hands. Touch my side. Stop doubting and believe. And it's in that moment that we see one of the great realities of God. In that through Jesus, he not only meets us wherever we are, even in those places of doubt, he doesn't want to leave us there. He says to Thomas, see my hands, touch my side. Believe. Believe. And so we see Thomas respond. In the same way as a child riding a bike, as a parent coming alongside them, encouraging them, speaking into their places of doubt, it comes to a point where the child must choose. They must decide. Will they trust? Will they believe? Are they willing to doubt their doubts and believe in you? It's a place where they come to based on the relationship that has been made. When Thomas saw Jesus before him, he, 
he suddenly makes this profound statement, perhaps the most profound statement in Scripture, when he says, my Lord and my God. Thomas was willing to doubt his doubts. Thomas was willing to then put his entire life back into Jesus' hands. So why include these stories? Why include these events of incredible doubt? We see that people like Thomas, like the other followers of Jesus, they would, they would go on to, to bring this good news to others. Ancient scholars, historians believe that, that Thomas was the one who carried the message of Jesus into the regions of India, eventually dying for his life, for his belief in Jesus in that place. And I have to think that encountering new people, in encountering their, their questions and their doubts and their uncertainties about Jesus, Thomas would have said, do I have a story for you? You jump forward 30 years to the book of Jude, another book in the Bible, written to, to, to believers in, in a place of questioning, in a place of uncertainty. And this early message was, be merciful. Be merciful to those who doubt. You see, God understands that doubt creates an opportunity. An opportunity for us to trust and believe as we step into faith an opportunity to, to believe even more of just the reality of how he becomes more real and faithful in the midst of life. But how do we do it? How do we doubt our doubts and step into faith? What I love about Thomas is he was specific with what he needed. He said, unless I see, unless I touch, I can't believe. If you have questions, if you have doubts, if you have uncertainties, then, then be specific. Look at them as, as opportunities to perhaps explore faith in a new way. To allow God to be at work in your life so that you too may be able to doubt your doubts and trust and begin this journey of life with him. But recognize that a choice is made. Jesus does not want us to remain in doubt forever, but rather use doubt as an opportunity, as, as a springboard into a relationship with him. I think it is most fitting that we end Easter Sunday with the image before you. The image of Jesus' open hands. Because in these open hands, I believe Jesus is not simply showing Thomas. He is inviting Thomas to come. One of the best ways that we are able to doubt our doubts is to see what Jesus offers to us is to see what Jesus has done for us and how he invites us into a relationship with him. We're not forced. We're not coerced. We're not argued into the kingdom of God. It's hands open wide, inviting us to step into life with him. At the very end of this passage, John makes a little bit of a, of a commentary statement, kind of a footnotes as we begin to roll to the credits. He says, you know, Jesus did many other incredible things that couldn't be included in this. But John says, I have written these ones down so that in hearing them, you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and in your believing, you may have life. That's the invitation that Jesus makes to all of us here this day. Hands wide open. 
an invitation to come and believe because it's in our believing that we not only see the faithfulness of God, but we begin to experience the life, this abundant life that Jesus desires for all of us. And so on this Easter morning, as we come to celebrate this good news, Jesus invites us, like Thomas, like the others, even if we're in places of doubt and of certainty, to be willing to step out in faith and experience life as only God can give in the midst of all things. Please stand with me as we sing together.